Hey Gemini, it's Mama TPG with One Love One Light Tarot. Welcome to your blind bag oracle reading. So I'll explain a little bit. These cards are a mix of, I believe it's, I want to say nine or ten decks. These decks were all um, decks that I purchased through Wish when I first started doing tarot. And I didn't know any better. <laughs> so I got the decks and they were all the same size and they were essentially knockoffs, okay? Knockoffs, bootlegs, misprints, whatever you, I'm not sure, but they didn't come with guides. And then I would see the, you know, the actual cards, like other readers doing them on YouTube and they were really beautiful. So I just felt like there's no way I'm going to use these on YouTube, right? For any of my readings. But I still use them to really um, learn tarot, learn how to connect with my intuition based on the images, the numbers, whatever it is on these cards. So, you know, I... I have moved on and and I only played around with them when I when I wanted to just kind of um, get a bigger picture uh, reading so anyways I had this idea of you know putting the cards in like a blind bag and pulling them out and creating like you know um, a more detailed message um, knowing that we have, instead of just the 78 cards of the tarot, we have about 700 cards here. So, I start ordering blind bags, or what I call blind bags, and they ended up being like this big, you know, like the little jewelry bags or whatever. So, I finally, I remembered that I had a... Um, an old co-worker that I was friends with on Facebook that was a beautiful seamstress. So I asked her if she would make me one. Now, I may have her make me a bigger one. I did put the link in the description if you want to purchase this. She has an Etsy. Um, but the point is, is that I still can't fit all the cards in here. So I basically, for each reading, I'm shuffling all of these cards and coming up with about a stack this big. And and then I'm going to put in there, put them in there and put a stick of um, selenite in there just to give the clearest messages that Spirit wants for you. So... Um, the, the thing that makes this interactive is that I don't have the guides. I have recently, um, done some research to, uh, get the meaning of these yogi cards. Um, but I, I mean, very recently, like the end of last week. So I don't know those fully. I usually just look at the pictures and, the images or the uh, sacred geometry that's on there and kind of let that speak to me. But you may see me um, just, it's really more out of respect than anything else that I may check this because, um, you know, there's various gods and goddesses on there and I don't want to um, diminish that. You know what I mean? So I may check those. I did... Um, you know, some of the other cards that didn't have guides, I went online and found, you know, some descriptions and so forth. So I may consult my notes a little bit, but for the most part, that's just, um, you know, it's whatever comes through when I see the cards and how they, you know, how they synchronize with each other. But you may have these cards. You may be a reader. You may have the cards and the guides. So you know the actual full meaning of a particular card. And I want that to speak to you, even if I don't speak to it. And then, you know, I'm going to show you each card that I pull. And then um, you may like, you know, it may trigger some type of intuitive feeling or a message that's specific to you. 
that I may not cover, you know? So that's kind of the interactive part of it. Um, I hope that I'm, that wasn't misleading in the title, but, um, or on the thumbnail. So, um, let me know though. Give me feedback if you enjoy this reading. I mean, obviously this may not be, um, you know, this might not be the right, it might not jive with, uh, doing it on YouTube as a general reading. I have done this for, um, people that I know and it's been super, uh, specific, if that makes sense. So this may not translate well, as that's the word I'm trying to say, um, as a YouTube general reading. So give me feedback, let me know. And if you do have, um, some messages that come through for you that are specific and you feel comfortable sharing, I would totally appreciate that feedback and let me know if you enjoy it. So let's get started. And I will say that I do, I, you know, because I don't have the guide sometimes, even if the meaning is very clear on the card, I may pick up, I may interpret it a little differently based on what spirit is giving me. Okay. So let's get these cards in here. I'll try to kind of mix them as I throw them in there. And let's put a stick of this in here. And let's get them mixed up real good and see what messages we have for Gemini. Okay. The first one out is the dreamer this is the fool card embrace your true purpose begin a new adventure trust yourself we have co-create number 40 we have milk and honey number 51 Trying to get a little better situated here. We have Ganesha. Ganesha. Angel therapy, Archangel Raphael, give your cares and worries to us angels and allow us to take your burdens. When I think I've surrendered, I surrender more. I want these to get knocked down. Okay. Dumavadi. sensitivity. Archangel Haniel, you are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and your feelings. Angels. Physical touch, number 47. A tender touch can mean so much. Number four, you are limitless. You can do anything you choose. Number 27, Fox Spirit, think on your feet. Lady Nada, heart awakening, awaken to acceptance and divine love. Give and receive in balance.
number 42, chop wood. And we have love, compassion. All right. So let's move these over here. Now, let me look at what this Dumavadi, I hope I'm saying that right, I could be wrong. Goddess of Disappointment and Letting Go is Dumavadi. Okay. And then the other one is Ganesha, which I have heard of before. I just God of New Beginnings and Remover of Obstacles. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start here. So I get this fool and this fox spirit, which doesn't necessarily go together, but in the traditional depiction of the fool, you know, he's like about to step off of a cliff, right? And I feel like this is fox spirit think on your feet I feel like there is a need to be mindful of your path okay and so I feel like it's something that you could easily take for granted um, I feel when I see this chop wood I think of you know just day-to-day -day things that um, you know that we do without putting a whole lot of thought into it and I feel like you need to be really mindful of your steps, okay? And there could be obstacles put in the way, but, but like we looked up, um, those obstacles are being removed for you. Um, So we have angel therapy and we have angels. Now this angels card could indicate, um, you know, you could be an earthen angel. Um, but otherwise I feel like this is really um, the angels way of saying that they are around you. And it says, give your cares and worries to us angels and allow us to take your burdens. So I feel like this is, you know, a call to allow the universe to co-create with you. And this is also about these cares and worries, you know, these day-to-day -day things and, and recognizing what you have in store. Um, this milk and honey. Okay. So these are both six. And I see, this is what I'm talking about with these cards. I can't really see. Okay, so that is an elephant there, right? That's an elephant like in this, you know, pool of you know, like really paradise for them, right? And feeling um, abundant. And I feel like this is about your need to recognize that you are abundant and you can be abundant, you know, it's, you can continue to be. Um, I also get this, um, heart awakening with love and compassion. It says, waken to acceptance and divine love, give and receive in balance. And so this is about, you know, 
self-love and then it's also compassion is about having love for somebody else despite everything like just giving them that love and there may be a call to really um you know maybe you are kind of going through something where you are less affectionate right now and spirit is calling you to it says a tender touch can mean so much and i feel like this is going to mean the world to someone this could be someone needing a hug and i feel like this is something that it says you're extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now honor yourself and your feelings but i feel like sometimes when we get into this you know extra sensitive um, you know, kind of phase or whatever, or, you know, some, maybe we just have a day where we're feeling like this a week, a month. I mean, it could be whatever time period resonates with you, but it, it creates this, like, it's difficult to show affection to people because it's like, you're kind of like on overload. I, this is my personal, um, experience, you know, so I feel like there is, um, you know, the angels are helping you with this. It says, you know, I feel like there's angels that are going to intervene in those situations. Not to say that you're not going to show affection, but it's like almost like calling them in to, to level you out, to bring that balance, right? And then I get these two together. I feel like, I feel like when it says, when I think I've surrendered, I surrender more. And I feel like, you know, if this is about disappointments, I feel like it's, it's about stop, stop putting um, the universe in a box in a sense. If you are trying to manifest something, understand that the universe will manifest it. It may not look the way you pictured. So that's where your expectations can be of one thing and the universe brings in something else that ultimately ends up being better. And I feel like that's really goes back to this full energy because the full is a little bit less, um, doesn't have much expectations. It's just trusting the universe and knowing that there will be challenges, but that, you know, you, you're being guided and protected and you will have victory. You will get through those things. Um, I, you know, there's, a uh, something that's gone viral from, um, Steve Harvey, how he's like, look back and the worst days of your life, you're batting a thousand. You made it through all of them. So you are the victor. I mean, I'm paraphrasing obviously, but so I feel like that's something to really keep in mind when you are disappointed. It's like everything happens for a reason. And, you know, if you can try to focus on you know, even the worst of times you get through it and you learn some type of lesson and that can help you. Like if you're able to, it's easier said than done, but if you're able to really go, okay, what am I meant to learn right now? Why am I going through this? People question God all the time. Why are you putting me through this? Be open to hearing that answer. There is a lesson for you to learn. It's not to say that terrible things happen to teach you a lesson, but it doesn't mean that there isn't a lesson for you to learn, right? Like, I, I, I don't believe that, you know, losing a loved one was for my own, me learning a lesson. But is there a lesson for me to learn from their life or about grief or about you know, rebuilding, whatever it is. Yes. Okay. Does that, if that makes sense. All right. So let's put these away and get some more. Oops. Okay. 
Okay, so we have spouse. We have Celtic. We, I believe this is called the gift. Uh, no, flowers. <laughs> but it's a warm-hearted gift, okay. Number nine. Okay, and this is number 30, Grasshopper Spirit, Take a Leap of Faith. Okay, we got that in the last one as well. And we have Bobcat Spirit, Life is a Mystery. Number eight. We have The Wheel. It says delays are over, sudden or unexpected good luck, a new car or travel. We have the gather, number 21. Hope is the conduit for miracles. Number 50, No Place Like Home. And we have Past Life Relationship. You have known each other before. So I feel like, yeah, right away because of this past life relationship. Um, in the previous poll, we had the angel, and then we also have spouse and Celtic here. So this may be significant to your past life relationship, which can have an effect on what lessons you're meant to learn now. So I feel like this is a soulmate. Um, I'm getting that um, that previously you may have been the opposite sex in your past life, but you were in a relationship with this same person. Okay. Okay, so I feel like these three cards together so we have the Will of Fortune, the Gather, and Hope is the Conduit for Miracles. So the Gather is all about kind of recognizing potential and being very um, open to kind of like finding resources in least the least likely of places. Like just... Um, and I feel like this, with all these pumpkins, there's something about this harvest season where there's going to literally be, you know, some windfall of money. Like, you, it literally almost feels like it's falling out of the sky. But it's something that has, you know, actually been fueled by your hope and prayers and the connection that you have with the divine. And we also get that with this gift, this flowers, right? This is a gift, a heartfelt gift. So it could be, you know, someone is really um, uh, 
someone is almost like looking for someone to bless because they it's like they're dealing with their own karma and it doesn't I don't even know if you're going to know this person but they're being told to t take this leap of faith and you're going to you're I, I don't want to say capitalize you're the one that's going to receive the blessing so that's for some of you and I think that it won't resonate until it happens right and I feel like you're really going to wonder why and it, it's about accepting certain things as just divine intervention, right? Divine, um, the divine turning the wheel in your favor. And it's just, a, it's just kind of where that flow is coming from. But it's not something that, it's the way that I feel like, I'm surprised we don't have some kind of justice card here in a sense because I feel like there's something that has to do with other people's karma. You don't worry about, you know, creating the balance. You, you're allowing the universe to balance itself out. And it's not always like, say somebody stole money from you, it's not that you're gonna get the money back from that person, it comes in some other way, right? Some other miracle in a sense. Um, others of you, I feel like there is definitely a gift coming to you and it may even be a new car or a new home. Okay. And I feel like this may not be just handed to you, like as a gift. These could be um, something that was willed to you. And I'm not saying, I don't see someone dying here. I mean, this has already happened and maybe you've been waiting to hear the will or waiting to for probate or something of that nature and you may end up with a home and a car um but something like that i don't see like the event of someone passing here but i feel like there will it's like either you or your spouse is coming into a car or a home so that's for some of you as well so let's get a few more cards to close this out we have the Shekinah, Sacred Self. It says, unleash your spirit, express your gifts, dance to the sacred rhythm of life. We have Archangel Michael, trusting heaven. You are safe. Angels stand close. Surrender your concerns and allow a miracle to occur. And we have the divine feminine and it also is number 29 which um breaks down to an 11 so there is definitely some angel influence here and then this is the ace of it has the ace of spades so that is the ace of swords so there's some type of you know I feel like this is going to really bring about that realization for you if you are the divine feminine of where you're putting your trust this trusting in heaven and the sacred self okay it's kind of like this could go this way this way or all three but the sacred self it looks like she is really looking at her own um like she's holding her chest so there's something about the heart chakra there and i feel like worry may have been um, kind of invading your heart space and Archangel Michael is saying trust in heaven and I did you know obviously we got a lot of angel energy in the first set of cards um, and I feel like dance to the sacred rhythm of life so Archangel Michael is saying allow a miracle to occur and I do see that
And I also, for some reason, with this sacred self, I feel like you, you do have gifts that you're not, you haven't explored. And it may be something that in your past life you um, were an expert. It could be anything. Um, and you're going to, like, you're not going to understand how you can all of a sudden say you've gone your whole life not being able to draw or maybe all of a sudden you realize that you s understand a foreign language. It's going to be something off the wall like that, okay? And it may be kind of a miracle. I don't think that's the miracle we're talking about here, but I feel like something's going to feel really bizarre, but you're already being told. And this may have already happened to you recently, but I feel like there are certain things that you may not you may not find out about 100% right now. So you're just going to embrace this mystery about yourself. And I feel like it is something that has to do with your past lives. Um, you know, I'm not real versed in, in reading past life energy. Um, but I do pick up on it a lot. I just have, um, I'm learning about really looking at past life, like, a whole entire reading about that but it may be something that you should look into I think it would be quite interesting and you may find out a lot about a lot about the lessons that you have you know the challenges that you've gone through the lessons you've learned in this life really um, are a direct reflection of what you've been through in the past. Maybe things that you weren't able to accomplish or things that you developed as issues in your past life are being worked through now. So I feel like it would be really interesting for you to look into that and it can give you a whole lot of insight into what you're working through now. So those are the messages that came through for you, Gemini. I thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this. And remember, the universe has your back and so do I. Take care.